Hey everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the little notification bell so you find out when my videos go up. As always, I want to tell you what books I read this month. My most least and most surprising book, or I guess my most favorite, my least favorite, and my most surprising book, and then tell you any kind of sarcastic jokes or things that I learned this month from these books. So this month I managed to read, I think it was a total of 22 books, which is slightly lower than I was hoping to, but I'm still very happy with that. So these are the books that I read this month. Ice Wolves, The Elementals, book one by Amy Kaufman. Our Shot and the End of Time by Roshani Chokski. Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, the first book in the Crazy Rich Asians trilogy, I think it's called. I know it's a trilogy, I just don't know what the name is for sure. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes Stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The Lost Hero by Rick Riordan, the first book in the Heroes of Olympus series. Moxie by Jennifer Methu, I think that's how you say it. My Name is Victoria by Lucy Worsley. Mrs. Magic by Elliot Schreffer, I don't think I said that right, the first book in the Lost Rainforest series. See You in the Cosmos by Jack Chang. The Serpent Secret by Sayatani Dasgupta, the first book in the Quran Mala, I think it is, and behind, and the Hidden Kingdom, and the Kingdom Beyond, sorry. Hello Universe by Aaron and Trada Kelly. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, the first book in the Shades of Magic trilogy, and this is actually a reread for me. Night Shadow by Sebastian de Castell, the second book in the Great Coats Quartet, I think it is. The Wing Snatchers by Sarah Jean Horwitz, the first book in the Carver and Grid series. V for Vendetta by Alan Moore, the graphic novel. Winter by Marissa Meyer, as a reread, the fourth book in the Lunar Chronicles. I want to say fourth. I think it's the fourth. The Defiant by Leslie Livingston, the second book in the Valiant trilogy. I also read a book called From Unseen Fire, which honestly, I can't for the life of me remember what the author's name is. I want to say Heather Morris or Heather Moss, but that's definitely not it. I don't know. The cover is right here. It's a very pretty book cover. I also read Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This was kind of a reread for me. I attempted to read it a couple years ago and DNF'd it. And lastly, I almost forgot to put this in here, I read A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass, the novella, so I guess 3.5 of A uh, Court of Thorns and Roses series. And lastly, I read kind of a reread of Wand Facet by Laurie Forrest. This is the novella, it's like 300 pages. The novella of The Black Witch, the prequel story. I read the ebook probably about a year ago or so almost, but I reread it via audiobook this time because the audiobook just came out. Favorite book this month is kind of a toss-up. I love these two books for their own reasons. So my favorite books this month were See You in the Cosmos by Jack Cheng and Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. They're both quite different. <laughs> so Crazy Rich Asians is kind of family drama, um, you know, uh, American Chinese family or couple, very modern day couple, go back to Singapore uh, to meet his family and they turn out to be like bajillionaires and they don't think she's good enough for him. And lots of family drama, and it's so much fun, and so trashy, and it's such a good summer read. Whereas See You in the Cosmos is a middle grade book about this really, really incredibly, incredibly, I keep wanting to say crazy and incredibly, crazy, incredibly smart boy, and he wants to learn how to launch rockets, and he goes on this adventure and finds out that the things that his mom and his brother told him about his dad are not exactly true, and then we find out all about his mother's mental health problems, and that this incredibly smart boy has been taking care of himself and her at the age of like 12. And it's all about family, and there's an adorable pet involved, and I loved it. Unfortunately, I think I'd have to say my least favorite book this month was Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Mind you, I say unfortunately. Honestly, once in a while I need to not like a series because it's just gonna... I can't afford to buy all these series or have the time to read all of these series. So it's all right that I don't like the books. But it's very, very generic YA. It's nothing special. It's been done before and better. And I just... I kind of had an issue too with like some of like the statements and the messages that kind of came across to me as well that I don't know if it was meant to come across that way or or what but I just didn't like the book I don't think it's even remotely deserving of all the hype that it has and I don't really plan on continuing on with this series 
And my most surprising book this month was probably Mez's Magic by Elliot Schrafer, Lost Rainforest. It wasn't necessarily bad, but I feel like I expected a lot more from a book that is blurbed to be Wings of Fire meets The Lion King. I didn't really get any Lion King vibes whatsoever from this book, especially. I like that there were animals talking to each other. It just seemed very juvenile and I know it's middle grade, but even for middle grade, and I don't know, nothing really surprised me, nothing was super interesting about it I didn't find, so I was kind of disappointed on that. But I did like it way more than I liked Red Queen. And lessons that I learned this month, I actually learned quite a few. I learned from Unseen Fire, The Lost Hero, and The Defiant to never ever get involved in Roman politics. You're asking to be behead, or stabbed, I guess, in Julius Caesar's case. It's the equivalent of asking, so what do you guys think of Donald Trump at a family dinner on the holiday? Just don't do it. It's just like opening a wasp's nest. Ice Wolves by Amy Kaufman taught me that no matter the age, it is always appropriate to be excited about dragons and were dragons and ice dragons and just dragons. I think I found the secret to the Game of Thrones success, guys. Arusha at the end of time taught me that I do have a line for being pro-slapping people. I'm pro-white lies. Because let's be real, we all did it. And I would have slapped some kids that did what they did to Arusha at the beginning. <laughs> I'm not pro-violence, but let's be real. I would have slapped someone. Also, it's my dream to live in a museum. Even if it's like an attached apartment, I want to live in or attached to a museum building. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix could be described as that Harry Potter book where Harry's kind of a dick. I think I've now accepted the fact that every Rick Riordan book is now based on the premise that grown, omnipotent adults can't keep it in their pants. Crazy Rich Asians made me realize why people watch Jerry Springer. The Lost Rainforest Mrs. Magic just reaffirmed my belief to never ever trust a snake. See You in the Cosmos makes me want to go back into time and test to see if I could convince either of my parents to let me go to an out-of-state anything fair at the age of like 12. I don't think I could convince my mom, but I feel like my dad would have let me do it. Hello Universe was the first time that I had actually read the word retard and had people, like, l like, seen people use it a derogatory term, and I honestly didn't realize that people still did that. It just makes me cringe. Like, hardcore cringe. Don't use it. If that's one lesson you take away, don't use that word. The Serpent Secret made me realize that I have the mental comedy level of a middle grader, at best. I also realized the Red Queen is the result of literally trying to take every trope that has ever existed in YA and cram it into one book without trying to make it good. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna get a hate on that one. <laughs> a Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab made me remember, this is why I do rereads. When you don't like the book the first time and you can't figure out why, and then you read it and you're like, oh my god, why didn't I like it the first time? Wall scene. Wall scene. Wall scene. Wall scene, wall scene, wall Trying to stay calm while reading or listening to sexist double standards in any form, but especially in high school, is literally the reason why the Mr. Crab eye twitch gif was invented. My name is Victoria, just made me remember and realize that everything to do with the monarchy is a conspiracy theory. I don't mean like Alex Jones conspiracy theory, I mean like lineage conspiracy theory. <laughs> the Wing Snatcher made me question, why do books continuously, I've, I've found one every single month at least, in the last like, year. Use the word automaton. I have never heard a human being in real life, in school, in casual conversation, in work, in any any sense or, or anything, use that word. Why do books use it all the damn time? V for Vendetta just made me want to go outside again every single time it rains and just stand there. And finally, Winter taught me don't piss off a cyborg. Or an alien queen, really. So those are all of the books that I read this month, my thoughts on my favorites, least favorites, the most surprising, and any interesting factoids that I learned that I thought would be good to pass along to others. Make sure to check the description down below. I will link the books to their Goodreads pages, and I will link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.